This is Cast of Wonders, the young adult fiction podcast featuring stories of the fantastic. Welcome. Episode 615. I'm Catherine Inskip, your editor and host. Our story for today is Optimal Care by Matt Tai, a Cast of Wonders original. Matt lives on a small farm in southeastern Australia with his amazingly patient wife and kids, the dogs, Sherlock and Nola, as well as Mycroft the cat. He is addicted to listening to audiobooks while running. You can find a list of his stories at matttie.weebly.com, as well as a cool picture of his brain drawn by his oldest son. He is an Aurealis and Ditmar finalist and has won the Australian Shadows Award for short fiction. His wife would like him to write some stories with happy endings. He is thinking about it. This story is narrated by Dan Absalonson. Dan Absalonson is an author, audiobook narrator and podcaster with a passion for fiction. He worked as a 3D artist for a couple of decades and is now a missionary in Guatemala. He holds a BFA in Animation and Media Arts and an MA in Biblical and Theological Studies. He dearly loves his large family of seven people and four cats. This story comes with a content warning for the terminal illness of a young person. And now, we've a tale to tell. Optimal Care by Matt Tai. Hey T, you about? James rounds the corner of the kitchen, his dark hair link, his face pale, his breathing all too shallow. Tinderbot is standing at the kitchen island bench. It pushes the sandwich and milk forward. The home care unit has already scanned the boy and computed a 92% chance he will reject the sandwich, but Tinderbot always attempts to optimize care. James sits down and opts for the glass. Your platelet count is down. Eat, Tinderbot says. Oh, come on, T. You think a sandwich is going to save me? A sandwich will not save you, James. The boy grins and wipes at his milk mustache. We've got to get you that upgrade, T, he says. If only so you can know how funny you are. Tinderbot says nothing. A response is not required. James sips his milk and grins wider. I'm just yanking your chain. Here, look at this. He unfolds a piece of paper and slides it across the bench top. Tinderbot notes the slight tremble of the boy's hands. An actual real flyer, James exclaims. Can you believe it? They're stuck up all over school. Talk about retro. Tinderbot picks up the flimsy thing. The static display is multicolored and obviously human-designed. The proportions are very incorrect. There are fireworks, but the trajectories do not align properly, and the blast patterns are far from reasonable. The banner headline is in various unnecessary colors. All of it is very poorly executed. Entirely sub-optimal. You can dance if you want to, You can leave your cares behind. Tinderbot reads the headline out loud and scans the date and other details. This is a social event. Yeah, and it's not far away, James replies. I might even make it. The distance is not far. You could certainly attend. James's grin fades a little. You sure are funny, T. Tinderbot is 87% sure this is incorrect. Tinderbot is wrapping the sandwich and cleaning the kitchen while James is talking to his father. Tinderbot monitors the stress levels in the father's voice, detects the disappointment in the son's. Finally, James logs off. He can't get back until the end of the month. The expense your father incurred purchasing me means, I know, T, expense all around. 
Who knew dying would suck the life out of two people? This is 100% incorrect. Your father is stressed, but his health has been satisfactory. Just then, the hollow beeps. James glances at the caller ID, and his pale face goes white. Shit, shit! He stares at the screen. I will decline the call, Tinderbot says, reaching out. No, James says, and hits the answer button. The face projected above the screen is so red, Tinderbot begins to move forward to adjust the contrast. Then the bot registers the dilated pupils and the way the girl touches her own lips lightly with two trembling fingers. The coloring problem is emotional then, and adjusting the contrast will be of limited assistance. Um, hi, Jackie, James says. Hi, the girl replies. Hi, James says again. There is silence. Tinderbot leans forward. That is a suboptimal response. And your heart rate has increased. Are you in distress? Shit, T, James says, his face flashing too white to a crimson that almost matches his collar. The girl's eyes widen. Is that a home care unit? James manages a shaky little laugh. Yeah, a tender bot. Would you mind not telling anyone? I get enough sad eyes at school already. Wow, your family must be loaded. The girl stops, and her red face goes even redder. She puts one hand over her eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I didn't think. James laughs again, louder this time. Tinderbot watches their halting conversation a moment longer. It appears suboptimal. But this time, Tinderbot is only 63%. Certain. Tinderbot is administering James's nightly treatment, adjusting the dosage carefully based on the day's antibody levels and the rate of cell metastasis when the boy speaks. Hey, T, he says a little dreamily. The meds have that effect. By morning, the boy will be eager and energized, but perhaps a little less so than the day before. Soon there will come a time when these drugs will do more harm than good. Yes? I need a favor, James says. If it is within my operational parameters, of course, Tinderbot says. The boy's smile widens, even as his eyes close. I need you to teach me how to dance. Tinderbot does not reply. The boy has fallen asleep. Hey T, you about? James enters the kitchen. Today he is steady on his feet, but slow. Tinderbot pushes the plate across the bench. There are two sandwiches. The home care unit has calculated a 9% chance James will eat even one of the sandwiches. But that should increase significantly in a moment. What's this? James asks. It is two sandwiches. Tinderbot replies, and James rolls his eyes. Moderate exertion may assist with the blood flow and mobility. I have accessed extensive online footage. Tinderbot continues. You will not be able to undertake the more rigorous routines, but some of the movements that accompany slower music should be achievable and beneficial. Tinderbot indicates the plate. If you are appropriately sustained. Are you blackmailing me? I am optimizing your care. I will not teach you to dance if it compromises your condition. James rolls his eyes but picks up the first sandwich. Tinderbot has indeed optimized the interaction. In addition to numerous dance tutorials, Tinderbot has reviewed several films of the approximate era the social event aligns with. The slow dance is the pivotal point of the social event. It is also the only dance you may be physically capable of performing, it tells James. Thanks for the vote of confidence, 
the boy replies. You must place one hand around my waist and also hold this hand. Tinderbot continues and steps close to the boy. This is a bit weird, James says, but places his hand in Tinderbot's. An old-style power ballad emanates softly from the care unit's mouth. So weird, James mutters. This is not a waltz, although there appears to be movements in common. Tinderbot says. The music continues to come from its mouth as it speaks. According to footage, the key is to stay close and align footfalls without hindering your partner. Who leads may be a discussion point for you and your partner, but I will do so now. Tinderbot steps to the side and attempts to move James. James stumbles and steps on Tinderbot's foot. That is to be expected. Tinderbot states, Practice will optimize your performance. Practice does not optimize James's performance. How can this be so hard? James says. He is sitting on the couch. Tinderbot has insisted on a break. The boy's strength is flagging badly. It's so easy in virtual. It is little more than repetitive swaying, but you do not appear to have the required coordination skills. Rhythm is the most commonly used term for what you lack. You don't do encouragement well, do you? The boy replies. I recommend ceasing these practices, James. Tinderbot says. Your condition is worsening. My condition is not going to do anything but worsen. James gasps just a little as he speaks. Overexertion may exacerbate your condition. There is currently only a 28% probability this will have a satisfactory outcome for you. T, I don't think you know what the hell you're talking about, James says. The words are confrontational, but the boy smiles a little like the robot has said something funny. But Tinderbot knows how low 28% is. Tinderbot stands outside the door and listens to the hollow call. Its interactions with James have definitely become suboptimal. Your bot doesn't want you to go to the dance? That is the girl, Jackie. Tinderbot is a home care unit, tuned to detect changes in breathing small gasps of effort, the sound of a fall in a distant part of a house. It can easily detect the distress in her voice from where it stands in the hallway. It changed its mind, James says. Are you getting sicker? She asks. No, no, James replies, which is not the truth. T always goes on about optimizing care. James says quickly, I think it's worried about stuffing up. That is closer to the truth. Well, God forbid you should do something that isn't optimal. The girl puts enough emphasis on the last word that Tinderbot can tell she is trying to find humor in the situation, but James does not laugh. The lessons have stopped. James has not complained. The boy sits in the kitchen, his face pale, his eyes sunken and dark. What do you think we are left with when it's all over? James asks. What is all the effort worth? Tinderbot can only answer in terms of itself. I seek optimal task performance. And who will say your performance was optimal? James's voice is low. I calculate that myself. So only you decide how you did. That is how I am programmed. Tinderbot confirms. T. James says very softly. I don't feel. The words fade to a whisper, and then James is toppling sideways. There is no danger of him falling, as Tinderbot has already registered the sudden drop in blood pressure and the fluttering eyelids, as well as several other micro-indicators, and has caught the boy. It undertakes a full assessment 
as it carries James upstairs. As it does, it initiates a call to the boy's father and another to the doctor. The afternoon routine has changed. All routines have changed. Now it is treatments and bed rest and drug-induced sleep. Now it is waiting. Waiting for the treatments to lose effectiveness. Waiting for the boy's father to return. Tinderbot calculates the probability of recovery, or even partial recovery, again and again. Tinderbot does not make sandwiches or try to get the boy to eat. James is mostly silent. The drugs that helped you through your daily activities are too strong for your body now and must be halted, Tinderbot says. In light of your condition, both your father and your doctor have made it very clear you are not to attend this social event. The drugs required to sustain you for the event will reduce your subsequent quality of life substantially. I'm dying in bed. Let's not talk about quality of life, James says. He does not sound angry, just tired. If you wish to be intimate with the girl Jackie, I can request your father that she visit you here. No tea, James says. His pale cheeks flush with two small spots of pink, but he smiles slightly at the home care unit. James, I do not understand why this event was so important. You can still participate in any one of numerous virtual activities. James looks at the bot for a long time. The whites of his eyes are bloodshot and his lips are dry, no matter how often Tinderbot applies salve. That would not be optimal, he says. The Dance If You Want To banner is too high on one side or too low on the other. The stenciling is uneven. There are more poorly colored depictions of fireworks. It is a very human display. T, can you let me walk in by myself? James's face is pale, and he is already breathing too quickly. Tinderbot has administered the drugs that are necessary for the evening, and the boy will be able to walk unaided. There is a 79% chance it will be for the last time. Jackie is standing at the entrance, underneath the suboptimal banner. Some of her peers laugh and jostle each other good-naturedly as they pass her by. Many are dressed in clothing reminiscent of the movie scenes Tinderbot has on file. Amongst them, both stress levels and pleasure markers are running high. Jackie sees Tinderbot and James and begins waving too vigorously. As James waves back, Tinderbot releases its grip on the boy's arm. James starts away, but then stops and turns back. For what it's worth, T, I think your performance has been optimal, he says. I'll see you soon, buddy. James walks slowly to the girl, and they go inside, arm in arm. Tinderbot looks at the crooked banner. It will assess its own performance, of course, but not right now. This is a story about love. It's about doing right by the people we care about even when it's hard, giving them the space to make their own choices and to find their own identity, recognizing that what may seem best to us may not always be right for them. It's about finding love and friendship even when the rest of life gets in the way of that. It's about dancing in a school hall for the sheer joy of being young and alive. It's not always optimal, but what part of being human is? Love brings pain, invariably. But never once have I seen anyone regret finding it or making room for it in their lives. Take risks, make bad choices, be there for your friends. Go out and live life and grow, grow, grow. 
join us again soon. We love bringing you the best audio fiction week after week, but we can't do it without your support. Your donations pay our authors, our narrators, our servers and our staff. Please consider supporting us with a monthly donation through either PayPal or Patreon. You can also review us on Apple Podcasts, request us on Spotify, and consider the stories we publish for award consideration. There are lots of ways you can help. Join the discussion on the EA Discord and visit us on social media at castofwonders.org. Come say hello. Cast of Wonders is brought to you by editor Catherine Inskip, assistant editor Alicia Caparasso, associate editors Rebecca Arn, Tanya Adelit, Amy Brennan, Somtoa Haysue, Kupya Cobb, Becca Miles, Ray O, Samuel Poots, Emma Smales, Denise Sudal, and Rin Yi. Our editorial assistant is Amy Brennan, our community manager is Denise Sudal, and our audio producer is Jeremy Carter. Cast of Wonders is part of the Escape Artists Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit, and this episode is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. That means you can download or listen to the episode on any device you like, but you can't change it or sell it. Our theme music is Appeal to Heavens by Alexei Nov, available from Promo DJ or his Facebook page. Thank you for listening. <laughs>